Before we begin doing quantitative calculations on the bias conditions for a MOS capacitor, we should stop and talk a little bit about the distribution of space charge that can happen under the various bias conditions. I drew a MOS capacitor. This one happens to have an n-body, therefore a p-type gate. They're always opposite. One type is the body, the substrate. The other type is the gate, the thin film coating that's got the dielectric in between them. The battery is attached across that. V sub G will say is the voltage at the gate, and we typically take the negative term of a battery just to be zero. Let's begin by looking at what happens when this bias voltage is zero. And so in an unbiased MOS capacitor, you have the P gate, which is almost metallic. But really what it is, is a degenerately doped p-type semiconductor, so the Fermi energy is at the valence band edge. It's unbiased, which means that the Fermi energy in the end body has to be at the same level. And that's what sets the level for the end body's conduction valence band, because you know equation 1.8.5 tells us what the difference is between the Fermi level and the conduction band. So now we know where these are. You'll notice that the bands are bent near the interface. It's easier actually to look at why it happens once we turn on the battery voltage. We'll look at it in a, in a minute here. But let's talk first about the consequence of this bending of the bands. The potential energy for electrons is higher near the interface. Electrons don't really want to be in this region, so they leave it and you get a depletion region. What's left here is positive space charge due to the ionized donors that can't go because they're stuck in place. And so a unbiased MOS capacitor always has a depletion region. The, the unbiased MOS is in a natural depletion state. Now you don't have depletion over on the gate side because it's degenerately doped, it's essentially metallic. Turn on some voltage here negatively. So turn around this battery. I don't have that shown in the diagram, but use your imagination. I've disconnected the battery and reconnected it oppositely so that the negative terminal is going to the gate and the positive terminal is going to the body. The gate voltage actually is less than the, the flat band voltage, but as long as the gate voltage is negative, you can be sure of that. You're going to be in depletion mode. And we can continue to use this diagram. Now, now that we can see why the bands have to bend. If you put a negative voltage on the gate, the gate is metallic. And so you have a negative voltage at the interface with the oxide. That negative potential at the interface of the oxide chases away the conduction electrons over here in the type N semiconductor. Conduction electrons in the semiconductor don't want to be near to this negative voltage. And that's why the potential energy looks like this, because conduction electrons in the semiconductor have a higher potential energy if they're closer to the interface. The bands bend up to reflect that, because remember, the band edges are essentially the graph of the potential energy of electrons. If we uh, turn around this voltage and put a negative on here, we're just in a very high depletion voltage. And then actually, you're still in depletion even with a positive voltage here like this. As long as this voltage on this battery is less than the flat band voltage. I'll refer you back to this problem that we did in the last section, problem 5.4. And I'll remind you of the solution. In that problem, we had a p-type body and an n-type gate. And we calculated a flat band voltage of minus 0.97, I seem to recall. If the body is n-type, therefore the gate is p-type, the flat band voltage is positive, but it tends to be around several tenths of a volt, and about a volt or so. With the, the n-type body and p-type gate, as long as the applied voltage from this battery is less than the flat band voltage, which will be somewhere around plus one volt, we will be in depletion. But once you raise the voltage of this battery up to the flat band level, which is again probably around plus one volt, you end up in flat band. There's not much to show you with flat band, everybody's flat. The only thing to point out is that in flat band, if it's a 
n-type body, the flat band voltage is a positive number, and if it's a p-type, it's a negative number. That meaning if you have a p-body, the voltage on the gate should be less than the voltage on the body in order to go into flat band. They're not in equilibrium because the voltage is applied. So you have the Fermi energy of the gate at one level and the Fermi energy of the end body at another level. I should put a sub n there. That's a, that is a quasi-Fermi level there, E sub Fn. Now, if you continue to raise the battery voltage, battery voltage is probably around plus one volt to give you flat band. Raise it to plus two volts. If you put a more positive voltage on the gate, these energy levels in the gate move down. When you have increased potential, the energy levels go down because these are electron energy levels, right? These go down. Or likewise, when you raise the voltage on the gate, it's the same thing as putting more negative voltage on the body, and these energy levels can be seen going up. Either way, as you keep raising that battery voltage, the body levels and the gate levels become more and more separated from each other. Not from conduction valence, but the body gets more and more separated from the gate. This gives us a new quantity also to define. It's important in this case to talk about how bent these bands are. The conduction valence bands in the end body bend downward now because we've put a very large positive voltage on the gate. It's metallic, so you all have very large positive potential right along this interface, which means electrons over here are attracted to this interface. And so you have a bunch of electrons that get to roll downhill. The potential energy of the electrons is lower as you get closer to the interface. And this little region here fills up with electrons. That's like the opposite of depletion, right? <laughs> so it's called accumulation because you've accumulated a bunch of charge carriers. As long as, you, yes, you turn that gate voltage for an end body, as I've depicted in, in these diagrams, you turn that gate voltage to something higher than flat band, which is a positive voltage, or for a P-body, you make that gate voltage more negative than the flat band voltage, which it is, flat band voltage is negative for P-body. In that case, you get to go into accumulation. Now, we're going to spend a lot less time talking about accumulation because it's a lot less important. Oh, and by the way, the quantity that I want to define here is the surface potential, phi sub s, which is the amount of band bending. It applies anywhere. We can talk about phi sub s as well for the unbiased and for depletion. Phi sub s is how much the band is bent at the interface from where it is deep in the bulk. The accumulation is the less important condition. What's going to be really important is what happens when we keep driving things into deep depletion. Take a look at what happens. If we have this battery turned around, so we have the negative terminal going to the gate, and we just keep increasing it, keep increasing it, what we'll do is we'll keep bending these bands even more as we keep increasing it. Eventually, you get to a point which is kind of almost deep depicted here, but that's a little erroneous. But you eventually get to the point where that Fermi energy is very close to the valence band edge when it's near the interface, even though it's supposed to be close to the conduction band edge because it's n-type. So what happens when the Fermi energy is closer to the valence band than it is to the conduction band? The n-type semiconductor turns into a p-type, and that's called inversion. That's our next topic to talk about is inversion. So let's talk about the distribution of this space charge, and we'll begin with the uh, unbiased case. So in the unbiased case, you have this depletion region here, which is a region where the electrons have been chased out, and all you have are these positive donor ions that have not been able to go anywhere because they're stuck. And so that's depicted here. This is the space charge in depletion. And no, it's not a flat top. It's just that's how I've drawn it. It's certainly got a curvature downward to, to nothing, to zero. On the gate side, it's more of a surface charge, right? You've got all these electrons in that accumulate over here because they're attracted by that positive charge. But this is metallic, so they can just go right to the surface and coat it, and they do. You have more of a surface charge of negative electrons on the P side and this distributed positive charge on the N side. You know, I'm not going to make pictures for depletion because depletion and unbiased are, are the same picture because when you're unbiased, you're in depletion. So let's move on to flat band. It's uninteresting. There's no space charge in flat band. There can't be because 
the energy levels are flat everywhere. So there's no electric field anywhere inside when you're at flat band because the energy is the same everywhere. Whatever the potential is, it's the same everywhere. So if there's no potential gradient, there's no electric field. And there's no preferred place for charge to be. So you don't have space charge at flat band. There's no preferred location. And finally, the space charge distribution for accumulation. In that case, we have negative space charge on the body, but that's not due to the donor ions now. That's due to the accumulated electrons that rolled downhill and took up camp right, right here at the interface. Because you have a bunch of electrons accumulated at this interface, over here at the other interface uh, between the insulator and the, the metallic gate, free electrons are chased away. They smell this negative potential over here and they run, to, run the other way. You have an absence of electrons over here. Not really the same thing as depletion. It's more like polarization, right? You take a metal and you, you expose it to some charge. Free electrons in the metal uh, move toward or away from it depending on the sign of the charge. So you have this polarization charge built up here at the edge of the P gate. So those are the conditions for uh, biasing a MOS capacitor. There's one more condition, which is inversion, which we're going to talk about next, which is what you get if you just keep driving depletion until that Fermi energy is close to the wrong band edge. And that's coming up next. And by the way, problem 5.3 in the book asks for sketches of the space charge distribution for these various cases. So you know, this is kind of the solution to that.